So I want to tell you a story today about how I bought my first big bike. Well, let's take you back to last September. Um, I've been waiting the whole summer to try and get a test. It wasn't happening. So it was about a couple of weeks just before my trip to Scotland. And I said, okay, I need to keep taking lessons. I'm going on one, two, five. I can't just stop. So I went for a lesson on Monday. And at the end of the lesson, I managed to get myself a test. So I did some training on Tuesday, on Wednesday I passed my mod 1 and on Thursday I went for chips with Pooley and, and Burton, I did a bit of training and on Friday I passed mod 1. At the end of it I was so happy, I couldn't believe that I've actually done it. But the thing is, is that when you've been waiting for something for so long, it's it doesn't feel real. And when you've got to the top of your hit, hill that you've been focusing on for so long and you look over, you realise that there are just peaks that are much higher. So suddenly I found myself in quite a difficult situation. I've passed, yes, but I've still got a 125. And in two weeks, I'm going to Scotland. Do I, now, I don't have to go on a 125. I could potentially buy another bike and go on that. Going on a trip like that with a 10 horsepower bike with me or my luggage was never going to be easy. It's always going to be quite the challenge. If I had gone with the 125, I was going to have 12 to 14 hour days when I could get something bigger and finish it in eight hours. It'd be quicker, safer and faster. I had no expectation that I would even pass. And suddenly I was feeling very lost and, and had quite the dilemma. I had to make a decision. Well, I said, OK, if I can find something, I find something. And if I can't, I've, got, I've still got the sim. So we can go on that. So many bikes and what do I get? So, as obviously the first thing that I do, I started to talk to others. And I got so many good pieces of advice. Um, and chief among them was go and sit on bikes, try them. Um, everything on paper can be look one way, but it's only when you go out and you try them and you ride them, that's when you really feel and understand what's right for you and what's not but there was a problem with this um, in the UK they don't allow test drives um, for new riders everywhere I went they would refuse me another piece of advice that I had got was make a list and see what your requirements are and from those organize them and once you've got them organized, you know what's the most important to you because there is, is no perfect bike. Every single bike is a compromise. The question is, what do, which compromise are you willing to make? In my case, I was quite unsure. Which bike do I take? So I listed my requirements. And the very first thing was affordability. I had to be able to pay for it. After that, it had to be reliable. Be simple and easy to maintain, be comfortable, be light, ideally a lightweight, have a good range and a miles per gallon, have some off-road capability um, and ideally be something that I could use as a long range tourer and have luggage options available. It had to be all of these things. So I started to go to different bike dealerships and just sit on bikes. And it was a very, very good experience because I was able to discount a lot of bikes straight away. And my experience with the Z650 had taught me that I needed something that was bolt upright. I couldn't have anything that would even with a slight lean, it just didn't suit me at all. So things like sports bikes were out. Um, even a lot of the touring bikes, they were just way too heavy, were out. Anything that was out of my price bracket was out. And doing this, I started to shorten my list. And so from the original list, things like, um, actually, let me just read out the list. A Z650, I said no. It was comfortable. GS, um, no, too expensive. Um, an FGR 1300, I found it was too heavy. And even though it had a 300 mile range, um, the nice ones were out of my price brackets. 
and it was the same thing with the T7, was out of my price bracket. So the um, NC750 was a bike I really liked, as well as the CB500. They fitted really well, they felt very comfortable, and the build quality was nice. I was really interested in, in the DCT. I thought it would help let me focus on the road and my riding, and have one less thing to worry about. Um, but again, I couldn't find, when I went to go look for a bike, any of these bikes available. The VFI 100 was too small, it was too on the hands. A 690 Enduro, I, I, I liked a lot, but again, out of my price bracket. Himalayan, I, I thought was very nice, but too small as my only bike. So, there were so many different things. Um, the V-Strom, I, I thought was very promising on paper, but when I tried several different V-Stroms, the geometry just wasn't right to me. It didn't feel as comfortable. So what I really ended up with a situation on top of the difficult enough in finding a bike was the, was the price hikes and the quality of bikes available. So it's a simple economic supply and demand and that just left the price going crazy. Um, the bikes I've been looking at that were two and a half thousand before were now near 4,000. I really had to ask, was it worth me paying that price or should I wait? So questioning myself if I was rushing, um, I really just felt confused again. And I tried speaking to some people and everyone was, well, it's your choice, you make it. Um, so I didn't feel right with any bike. Um, and then Extra Rider actually mentioned the Transalp. So I said, okay, I did sit on one or two. I didn't think too much of it. So I went back and re really researched the Transalp, um, looking at understanding that there were actually you know, three different models, a 600, a 650 and a 700. I think it was a really good time because I learned so much about different bikes. I really got a lot of specs, really let myself of being absorbed by it. So it was, it was a lot of fun as well. Um, and I really got to that point and said, you know what, I need to make a compromise, which things are going to go. And ultimately I said, right, let me find the right bike. It has to be clean and good enough. One of the problems I found was the pictures that were being used to advertise, where I would get to the place and the bike would was a different, it, it was the same bike, but it, it had so much rust, had so many other issues, wires loose, and I was really getting quite frustrated and annoyed with the whole situation. Uh, until I went to Stafford and I found one Transalp 650 with 10,000 miles on it and it was clean it was actually generally it was a nice bike there was um, no r rust on it or like I'd seen on the other, other bikes it was in good nick um, it actually been sitting in a garage for almost 10 years so I was quite concerned about buying a 16 year old bike um, that had been sitting still for so long um, but I took it, tried it, and I said, you know what? It feels right. And it's we, I just needed to make a decision. And sometimes you just have to jump. That's ultimately what I did. So I paid a deposit and made um, arrangements to come back the next week, pay the balance, and take the bike. The weight and prep. When you have something in an area you don't know too much about, you have to trust someone. And in reality, with very little knowledge, you're doing it blindly. Um, you can ask people, um, but really at the end of it, it's an opinion. So you have these expectations versus experience. So you have the expectation that, oh, it's a simple thing. I'm going to have a nice bike. Um, and so you're going to be worried. You're going to be stressed. But you have to. Come, I came to a point of acceptance. Um, it's going to be what it's going to be. I've done the best I can. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, we can reach that bridge when we come to it. Collecting my new bike and my first ride. So, this was a timetable I'd bought. I'd passed my test week on week one. Seven days later, I had bought the bike. And now the bike, uh, I'd gone to collect it. It was one week before my trip to Scotland. I came uh, on the train, picked it up, started it up. Um, got all the insurance and tax and everything else sorted and I had about an hour's worth of travel so I felt quite jittery on it um, again remember I hadn't had a chance to ride it, it I just sat on it heard it running and said no oh, sounds all right and that was it um, so I was feeling quite skeptical I was feeling quite worried um, but I, like I said you just have to go and jump 
uh, ultimately you trust it's a Honda and they're bulletproof bikes V-twins and I shouldn't have any two major issues with it so riding home with a new bike was very very interesting and I felt just how different it was it was a much higher bike it was a 21 inch front 17 rear it was top heavy and I really have to say in that first time back I didn't take it I took it very slowly took it very calmly but I really started to ha understand the bike a lot better and I think that's what it is it comes with experience you have some reviewers um, I'm always amazed by extra rider um, he does so many excellent reviews and he's always trying different bikes and he's able to pick up so many things I didn't have that experience but like I said you just got to go and you make that experience but overall I probably I was really happy I had a it was, it, I was starting to trust the bike uh, I felt I couldn't do things that I'd done other bikes. This was its own person, its own personality, and she was going to do things her own way. But I felt very comfortable uh, going down the motorway, going at speed, at uh, 70, um, taking small roads, taking corners. And when I got back home, I felt, you know what? I have done. The, I have made the right decision. It is the right bike. It feels good. It feels correct. And then I put the bike away and didn't touch it for a week. The day before I was going to go to Scotland, I took it out, went to the petrol station, filled it up, uh, checked the water, checked the tyres, added on some bits and bobs, and that was it. I basically didn't touch the bike for a week, I didn't ride it, and then I, was, well, I went to Scotland. Well, that was a calamity, and the video will be coming shortly. So, what's my experience now looking back after six months of owning the Transalp? Did I make the best decision? I think ultimately whatever decision we make at a time is done with the best information, the best thought processes and that we have available at the time. Um, if I were to make a decision today, I ultimately have to probably say I wouldn't change it. The majority of my riding has been on the road rather than off-road like I had expected. So things haven't worked out as I was expecting it to. But ultimately, I made the decision with the best amount of information and the Transalp is the most comfortable bike I've sat on. That was within my budget. And so, yes, yeah, still it holds up today. If I paraphrase a saying by the photographer Chase Jarvis, the best motorbike is the one that you have. Perhaps saying that the bike that I've got can do more. I'm the weak point, not the bike. So ultimately, I would say looking back, that my skills need to improve. I have to be the better rider to make that bike do what I want it to do. I believe that the ultimate weak point is the, the rider rather than the bike. And to that end, um, I've undertaken a few courses. I've done the bike safe. I've done the enhanced riding scheme and I've joined ROSPA. So I've been quite positive about that. Um, so yeah, I've got plenty more to learn. The more I can learn, the better rider I can be to let the bike do what I need it to do. Um, because bikes are amazing machines. They can do so much more that we can get out of it. So is it the best bike? Perhaps I would say I'm not the best rider for the bike. And I need to get better. Take care, ride safe and stay curious.